technically is the same as good. What else? Another common word, great. Do not say great. Oh, it's great. Say it's commendable, right? As Filipinos, you say, oh, he is, he is actually a great lecturer. There you go. He is actually a commendable lecturer. It sounds more academic, right? Okay, another one. Amazing, right? Ooh, amazing, right? You don't say amazing. You say astonishing. Astonishing. There you go. Next one. Get. Well, I get involved with remarkably or impressively great. Very good. Okay, so, all right. So, get. Do not say get. You say amass or procure. There you go. Well, for me to be able to amass a good score in the IELTS examination, there you go. Instead of saying, well, for me to get a good score, for me to amass a good score, there you go. For me to procure a good score. Diba? Pag ganyan ang mga salita, nakakayaman. Diba? Yan yung mga naka-Hermes na tao. Yung mga naka-Barkin. Diba? Oh my God, yeah, yeah. Could you please amass me my water? Please make sure that my water is boss, not Evian. Because I'm allergic to Evian. Evian is panligo for me. Arte mo? <laughs> okay. What else? Bad. Do not say bad. You say it's atrocious. Right? Atrocious. <clears throat> so you say atrocious sense. When you say atrocious sense, it means a bad sense. Bad instinct, right? Well, I always get this atrocious sense every time I go outside without my friends. Diba? Atrocious. Yung iba nga ang ginagamit pa dyan, guys. It's a title of a movie. And I know you know this movie. The movie is Insidious. Evil, right? Insidious. Scary. <laughs> Scary. Barbaric. <laughs> okay. So what else, guys? <clears throat> next one. Brutal. Yeah. Atrocious. Okay. So next one, guys. Don't say beautiful. You say it's pocritudinous or beautious, right? Well, that person is pocritudinous. That action is pocritudinous. That thing is beautious. There you go. Let's say, oh, he ugly. You say, you say unsightly. There you go. Another one. Instead of saying advantage, you say leverage, right? What else is a term for leverage? Come on, give me a synonym for leverage or advantage, guys. Give me a synonym. Come on, guys, you can do it. Type your synonyms for leverages or advantages. Significant. What else? Benefit. Benefit? Merits. Yes, merits or meritorious aspects. Very good. What else? Credit. Okay, what else? Cerebral hemorrhage. <laughs> Profit. Bakit parang puro galing naman ng merayam, guys? Edge. Yes, there you go. Edge. No? Pros. Okay, good. All right, very good. Okay, so what else? For disadvantage, guys, you say inimical side, right? The inimical side for disadvantages. And of course, for the result, you can say corollary. Corollary. Gusto nyo gumaling kayo sa pronunciation, guys. Do you want to be better with pronunciation? Yeah? Pronounce the word corollary every day. Pronounce that every single day. Corollary. 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 There you go. It will do wonders when it comes to your pronunciation. Okay, hold on, guys. Okay, so moving forward, guys. Okay, so, sir, what is the technique for me to get? Sir, I got to go. I will have my COVID duty. Oh, okay. Please stay safe, my dear, okay? I think Sir Jeffrey will be uploading a copy of this discussion. I'm not sure, however, okay? So, I'd rather you guys finish it. But if you need to go, guys, and you're going to have duties, please stay safe, okay? My prayers are with you, okay? Okay, thank you. Please take care. Take care, Eliza. Okay, take care, Eliza. Okay. All right, so Eliza, me too. Li Lian, are you going to? Oh, eh, oh, alis na rin ako. <laughs> okay, guys, ingat ha. Okay, if you have duties, it's totally fine, okay? All right, <coughs> stay safe, guys, okay? We salute you. All right, so let's move forward, guys. Okay, so it is highly recommended for you to utilize a minimum of five Lexis 
on the actual examination. However, this is something that does not happen overnight. It does not happen overnight. It's highly impossible for a person to have good lexical resources overnight. So what should you do? Here's a tip, guys. Okay. Install Merriam Webster Dictionary on your, on your phones, right? Who here has Merriam Webster Dictionary on their mobile devices? Who? Who has? Okay, there you go. Me. Okay, so what should you do with Merriam Webster? I swear Merriam pala. The entire time, ko Merriam. What should you do with Merriam? Go to word of the day. Word of the day. Go to word of the day and then you're going to see the academic words there. No? And then, if you have found if you have found a word that you are interested at, write it down in a notebook, write down the meaning and use it in a sentence three times. Three times. Okay? Or use it every day. Use it every day. Okay? All right. So, there is actually this one word. Sir Jeff knows this. There is this one word that we do love at Elite Intellect. It is the word tutelage, right? Tutelage. <laughs> it actually started as a joke inside the classroom. The word tutelage, guys, means guidance, right? A guiding person, a guiding light, guidance. So I have this very amazing student that I love so much. She's using this every day. Every day that they do their speaking exercises, she uses the word tutelage and what have you. She can now use it smoothly. She can use the word smoothly, right? The worst thing that you could do in the examination is to use a word for the first time. Do not use the word for the first time on the IELTS speaking exam. It should be something that you use every single day. Okay? Carry pa guys. Kaya pa, kaya pa. Okay, kaya ang kaya. Let's fight for your dreams. Kailangan tapusin na lang to hanggang magkamatayan na. Paki-English nga po. Okay, challenge. Challenge, guys. Challenge. Please translate that into English. Kailangan tapusin na lang to hanggang magkamatayan na. Type in your answers now. Come on. You can do this. The, the word cluster is kailangang tapusin na lang to hanggang magkamatayan na. The end. <laughs> we have to finish this until we die. Okay, finish. 2020. <laughs> I need to finish this because let's end this, okay? <laughs> yes, guys. Right. Okay, so that's good, right? Let's not... Okay, the end is near. <laughs> Grabe ang morbid naman ng iba. <laughs> I love your humor. Till death do us part. Ay, okay. My forever. Yeah. Sa Pilipinas, my forever. Forever na quarantine. Okay, forever more. All right. So, some of you here in the Philippines, where which province are you staying at? Diba? Dito kasi sa amin, it's already MGCQ. However, they're still very strict. Okay. So, let's move on, guys. Okay, so build your vocabulary. Have a separate notebook and instead of memorizing the words, use them every time you speak so that when you get your examination, it would be effortless for you. Okay? Again, take note of our word, uh, take note of our, what do you call this, inspiration for this one. Never use a word for the first time on the IELTS exam. It's dangerous for your health. Okay? Do not use the word for the first time. This is what I need. Thank you. There you go. You're welcome, Hyacinth, my dear. Okay, so moving forward. All right. Warning. Do not use words that you cannot utilize properly on the examination. This will give you negative marks. Okay, so sir, what do you mean by that? If you do not know the meaning of that particular word, don't use it. I'd rather you use simple words. If you do not know how to utilize that word, or how to incorporate it in a sentence, I'd rather you use simple words. Simple words are good enough to get you a 6.5 or a 7. Don't worry. Okay? It's good enough to, give, to get you a 6.5 or a 7. Okay? But since we're aiming for a 9, then we should speak in Chinese. Okay? <laughs> All right. So next one. Yeah, make your examiner make your examiner wonder what you mean by words, no? Sir, is it okay to ask the invigilators? Okay, hold on, hold on. 
Let me open this chat. I think this is important. <clears throat> okay, hold on, guys. Chat opening, loading. Okay, the question is, sir, is it okay for us to ask the invigilators if we do not understand the word in the questions being asked? Yes, it's totally fine. Some students are afraid to ask questions because they think it will get them a negative mark. It does not make you look bad on the exam, guys. If it, what it does is it actually adds up to your um, capabilities. And of course, your examiner will be impressed with that. How many times can we ask her? Um, a limited to at least three questions if you do not understand. Okay? Three only. Okay? However, if you exceed beyond that, Baka magalit na ang examiner, okay? Yung iba examiner pa naman natin, ang galing ano, ang galing humiti. Makaganya lang sila sa'yo. Oh, wow! Very good! Oh, yeah! Aha! Ooh! Okay! Tapos ang score mo, five. <laughs> We have examiners like that. Thanks, sir. Oh, you're welcome, guys. Okay. So, let's move forward. <clears throat> All right. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, may mga examiner na ganun, guys. They smile. However, they're going to give you a negative mark, okay? So be careful. I'd rather you have the honest or brutal one. Oh, it's okay. It's okay, okay? We're going to rehabilitate that. Don't worry. Okay, so next one, guys. Let's move on. Ah! I opened the video. <coughs> okay. All right. So, This was actually one, this is actually a question to me the other day. Sir, are we allowed to use an idiomatic expression on the examination or can we use idiomatic expressions? Yes, I highly recommend for you to use one idiomatic expression. Just one, guys, just one. Don't exceed beyond that. Because if you exceed beyond that, tula na yung ginagawa mo be. I have butterflies in my stomach. Wow. I have call you bubbles. Okay, good. Okay. Here's a task. Here's our activity for you guys to wake up. Type in the idiomatic expression that you know, except for cup of tea. <coughs> okay, I have butterflies in my stomach. What else? I am over the moon right now. It means you're over it. It costed me an arm and a leg. Ay, alam ko kung saan nag-review to. Yes, that's right. Uh, it costs, it's very expensive. It's raining cats and dogs. Once in a blue moon, okay? Once in a blue moon. Okay, what else? Come on, guys. Come on, come on. I want to see your idiomatic expressions. Stones throw away. Wow, just alam mo stones throw away. Hustle and bustle. Heart of gold. There you go. What else? Hustle and bustle of the big city. Bread of salt. Run out of steam. Bread and butter. Piece of cake. Anyone? Wait lang. Hold on. I had a whale. I had the whale of a time listening to your lecture. Yeah, that's right. My Waterloo. Throw in the towel. It's Greek to me. Okay, there you go. We're in the same boat, right? These are... Um, Hitting two birds with one stone, right? It's corny, yeah. That's corny. That's corny is actually an idiomatic expression, right? Money burns hole in my pocket, right? Correct. Money burns hole in your pocket or your pocket is highly burnt. Okay, there you go. So, run of the mill. Yeah, run of the mill. Ano pa? Break a leg. Hit the sack. When you say hit the sack, you're, go you're about to sleep. Yeah, you're about to sleep. Okay, so. Here are my tips when it comes to the idiomatic expression. So, smoothly use one idiomatic expression on your exam. This shows your examiner that you can add interest with your answer by using idioms. Albeit, do not overdo it. Avoid the cliches and avoid the colorful idioms. Okay? All right. <clears throat> Sir? Wait, what's that word? Albeit. When you say albeit, it means however. Diba? Albeit. Ay. Although, there you go. Although, however. No? Ang social, pang mayaman na yung English natin ngayon. No? 
ng mga bata tayo. Although, ngayon, albeit. Okay. So, let's take a look at the wrong examples. Let's talk about, let, let's take a look at the wrong, uh, these are the cliches that are idioms, okay? Wrong. Think outside the box. I've heard that 1,585 times before. Cliché. Sorry, I need to go to my work. Okay, John Rose, please take care, my dear. Okay, stay safe. All right, next one. See the glass half full. Okay, what else? Blinded by rose glasses. When you say blinded by rose glasses, you are madly in love, right? Okay, what else? Head over heels. When a person is head over heels. And of course, silver lining. <laughs> <laughs> These are the cliché types of idiomatic expressions that we do not recommend for you to use on the examination. Okay? What else? The colorful idioms. What are the colorful idioms, guys? Okay, so, tickled pink. Hit the sack. Piece of cake. Paint the town red. Feeling blue. To be yellow. Okay. These are overly animated or overly colorful idiomatic expressions. So when you are using overly colorful idiomatic expressions, it is not suitable for the academic language. Okay? So as much as possible, avoid them. Sir, what should I be using? These are the things that I know. Don't worry. I made you a short list. When I say short, technically it's short. Four items lang yan. Okay, so first one. You can say pencil something in. When you say you're going to pencil something in, it means you're going to make tentative arrangements, right? I need to pencil something in for the upcoming seminar with the students worldwide. So you are going to make tentative arrangements. What else? Ahead of the curve. You heard this. You heard this, this COVID-19 pandemic, right? We have to stay ahead of the curve. So it means that you're going to be highly creative with your approach. Okay, what else? Another idiomatic expression is the word banner year. When you say it's your banner year, it is your year marked with success. It is a year wherein you achieve a lot of success. Like for me, my banner year is last year. My banner year is last year when I got out. Oh, two years ago is my banner year when I got engaged. Inilig. <laughs> okay. 2020 is my banner year. Claiming it. Yes, guys. Hi, Justin. Amen to that, sister. I mean, come on, guys. What? How many months do we have left for the year 2020? August, September, October, November, December. Four? Okay. So let's say almost five months. In Jesus' name, these last five months will be the most productive most abundant, most prosperous months of our year. The year did not start in January. It will start this month. Okay? Always have that mindset because Jesus is watching over you and he is taking care of his children always. All right. Yes. Sino gusto ng encyclopedia? Okay, let's continue. Sister naman, binawi na naman ng humor. All right. Let's claim it, guys. Always claim it. Always that have always have that positive affirming message to yourself. When you do one thing, declare the, uh, the, the blessings of the Lord. No? On your exam, when you enter your exam venue, diba? On your exam, when you enter your exam venue, wala akong pakialam. Ako ginagawa ko to, guys. Every time that I lecture in my classroom, every time that I take an examination, I raise my hands up, I declare in the authority that Jesus gave me. I will get an amazing score. It's that simple. You don't need to pray. Oh Lord, tulungan mo ako. Kailangan ko. Naku, Diyos ko. Patay na yung mga baboy na ihahamba namin. Yung nanay ko, may, gra may graham cake na sa rev. Diba? You don't have to pray that, okay? You just say, I declare the authority of Jesus that He has given to me that I will get a good score on this examination. It's as simple as that. The Lord is listening to me. Okay, so let's move on. <clears throat> All right, so another one. Grammar is everything. 
Sir, <laughs> who here, admittedly, okay, say, I do, say, I do. Who here, admittedly, is quite weak when it comes to grammar? Raise your hand. Say, I do, type, I do. Okay. Yes, totally understandable. Okay, I do, I do, I do. All right. So, yeah. Being Filipinos, guys, we are quite weak when it comes to grammar. Even I, when I was studying at Cambridge University, <laughs> my classmates, they tend to laugh at me sometimes because I'm using words that are, um, what do you call this, not fitting for that particular research. No? Why? Okay, let me tell you something, guys. There are, there are 842 grammar rules that you need to follow in English alone. However, you only need four to pass your IELTS examination. Want to know what those four are? Okay, let's talk about the four essential grammar um, things, uh, grammar factions that you need to improve on. Okay, so always remember this is the first one, the connectors, guys. Always remember the connectors. And of course, by connecting, always remember to connect ideas by using your transitional cues. Okay, sir, when you say transitional cues, can I use further more and more over on my speaking examination? No. Why? Because furthermore and moreover are quite not natural when it comes to the speaking examination. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Given that these are the circumstances, it can be deemed as manageable, albeit one needs to exert some effort. Hence, people may attain the momentous outcomes. There you go. One sentence, two sentences, one sentence, two sentences. Three connectors, right? Two sentences, three connectors. It's as simple as that. Use your connectors. Your examiners are highly impressed if students can use their connectors properly. Believe me. Uh, believe me, okay? Sir, I don't know some of these connectors. What are the simple connectors that you can suggest that I should use on the examination? Listen carefully. The acronym is FAN. Boys. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. Fan, boys. Again. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. Fan, boys. F A N B O Y S. <clears throat> You can use those words as your simple connectors in the speaking examination. For this idea, there you go, fanboys, diba? For this idea, what I, what I can say is, but, there you go. So you use them on emergency situations only. Your flotation devices can be seen under your seat. <clears throat> Para po sa mga pasahero namin sa business class. Ang eroplano po ay babagsak. Your flotation devices can be seen under your seat. Para po sa mga nasa economy class, please repeat after me. Hail Mary, full of grace. Charat! Joke lang po. <laughs> we are about to serve lunch shortly. For our business class passengers, we will be providing your spoon, fork, and knife. Para po sa ating mga economy class passengers, hindi po yan souvenir. Maraming salamat po. <laughs> Aminin! Hoy guys! Huwag tayong maglukuhan. Sino dito ang may kutsara tinidara? Kumot ng eroplano. Lalo na yung Etihad. Maganda kumot nun. Tsaka Philippine Airlines. Huwag niyo akong lukuhin. May collection na kunyan. Okay, let's continue. Ano ang pinakamatinding na nakaw ko sa eroplano? Yung flotation device. I'm kidding. <laughs> Engine. All right, let's continue, guys. Okay, so moving on. <clears throat> be careful with your tenses. Okay, guys. Be careful with your tenses. What are the tenses that we usually utilize on the examination? 
past, present, future, di ba? Simple past, simple present, present progressive. Okay. Yeah. It would only take those that I've mentioned for you to get a good score on your examination. However, listen carefully to the examiner about the tense of the question. Your answer should reciprocate the tense that was given. Okay? Again, listen carefully to the tense of the question. Your answer should reciprocate the tense that was given. Let me give you an example, guys. Okay, listen carefully. I'm your examiner. Okay. What activities did you used to do during your free time when you were a child? Again, what activities do you like to do during your free time when you were a child? So if I answer this way, guys. Well, I enjoy going to the mall because when I am at the mall, in on, di ka pa sure kung in on at, in on at the mall, what I do is, is that correct? It should be on the past tense, right? Way back when I was younger, I used to, okay, I used to go with my father and we, I used to learn equestrian. Equestrian was one thing that fascinates me. It is a sport which utilizes horses because I am Mikey Kowanko. Right, equestrian, right? She's an equestrian champion. Yeah, I, I do equestrian, guys. Sir, san ka ang abayo dyan? So, may kalsada namin. Okay. All right. So, guys, be careful with the tense of the question. Word salad. Okay. Be careful with the tense of the question, okay? So if, for example, sir, I will leave now my baby is awake. Okay, say hello to your baby for me. Hello, baby. <laughs> okay. So next one. Kaya pa? Parang inaantok yata, ah. Parang inaantok yata si Le. Inaantok ba? Sige nga daw po, inaantok yung mga alaga ko. Let me take a look. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Doreen. Okay. Let's call Doreen. Doreen left the Zoom class. Doreen left. <laughs> Doreen left the Zoom class. <laughs> Hi, Doreen. <coughs> Hi, Sir Joseph. Hello. Okay, so let's begin. Are you ready? Um. Yes, I'm ready. Okay. So, Doreen, let's talk about callers. What colors do you think are quite popular nowadays? I do think that nowadays red is still popular because most of the younger generation is attracted to that. Especially during Valentine's, I could also see... Oh, sorry. Your, your, your answer was interrupted. Okay. All right. Oh. <laughs> Let's move on. That was my question before. Wait, Mark, that was asked on you? Uh, that was asked to you? Okay. I think I formulated that question. All right. So next question, Dori. Which part of the house is your favorite part? My favorite part of my house is the bedroom because this is where I can relax. I can read my favorite books and as well as I can uh, be myself and also doing my me time and spending, uh, listening to some music. So I, um, I really love to be in here. Okay, good. And for your last question, Doreen, do you think, what do you think were the changes as regards the eating habits of the people in your country when compared to the past and today? I do believe that in the past, uh, people mostly eating healthy foods because they do tend to have their own organic or they do planting and also in the backyard, you can have rabbit, but Rather, now, I could say that um, people nowadays, especially the younger generation, has been influenced by the advertisement of the fast food companies. Like, we tend to go to Jollibee, McDonald's, or famous fast food chain, especially during, uh, I mean, every weekend. Okay, very good. Thank you, Doreen. All right, guys. Yes, okay. All right. Let's give Doreen... Some applause. Okay, there you go. Some virtual applause. Yes. Okay, so. All right, let's move on. This reminded me of something that I forgot to write down on this PowerPoint, okay? Okay. Do you want to know 
what is the regular score that my students get on their speaking examination? Want to make a guess? Regular score? Nine. Oh, ay naman yung nine. Diyos ko naman. Diyos ba? Okay. The regular score that all my students get at Elite Intellect 9 is 7.5 to an 8. To an 8.5. Sir, why? Are they mutant students? No, they're not. No, they're not. Believe me. I always encourage them to swim against the tide. When I say swim against the tide, you have to foresee, guys, what will be the answers of the other people. Okay? For example, the question is, what color, oh, let's base this one on the questions that I asked the read, okay? What color do you uh, do you think is trendy in your country right now? Okay? So if I'm going to say red, blue, orange, pink, purple, yellow, violet, and such, right? If, for example, you think, uh, let's pretend that I'm your examiner and I asked 50 people on that day, do you think they're going to say the same things? Do you think they will say the same colors? Yes. What if there is a test taker and said, I am a person who likes looking at the color cerulean. What if that person said cerulean? Do you think I would remember that person? Yes. Likely, I would be impressed by his answer because it's my first time to hear that on that day. Like, for example, if I asked you about your favorite food, right? If I asked you about your favorite food, a lot of people fried something, grilled something, sinigang, kare-kare, pinakbet, binaguongan, dinuguan, uh... Uh, I don't know what the other ones are. I don't eat. I'm a, I'm mutant. Okay, fried chicken, fried pork. Okay, pasta, spaghetti. There you go. What if my student, the, the person said, well, it's not my favorite because I was just able to encounter this one time. However, I find it quite fascinating to eat sturgeon caviar. Wow. Sturgeon caviar. What is your favorite dessert? What's your favorite dessert? Cake, chocolate cake, strawberry cake, strawberry shortcake, hot cake, cupcake, lemon square cheesecake, right? A lot of cakes. But what if the student says, Paji bar, the student says, well, given that my family and I love traveling, when we went to Paris, I was able to encounter their pate totato. And of course, they're croak and bush. Excuse me? Croak and bush? What? I will remember that student, even though I don't know what food that is. It will eliminate my negative connotations on the grammatical capacity of the student. I wouldn't care. I would care about their responses. Okay? Okay. Here's one student of mine who got an 8.5 in speaking. Her name is Amandeep Kaurjal. She is an Indian, Filipina Indian student. student. Huh? She was asked by her examiner, <clears throat> What is your favorite place inside your house? Want to make a guess what she said? Nope, it's not the living room, it's not the kitchen, it's not the bedroom. It's the toilet. Yeah, she said the toilet. I am a person who enjoys spending my time inside the toilet because I, our toilet is quite eccentric. The toilet is designed to look like an outdoor toilet. It has Japanese, it has Chinese bamboo inside. And the floor, instead of tiles, is made of stones. Taray ng toilet mo ba? Diba? So I asked her, Jam, is it true that your toilet is made of that? Sabi niya, no sir, I was fabricating all along. Diba? <laughs> but she got a good score. Another student of mine. Her name is Ms. Trisha Jane Lim. A graduate of DLSU, I think, in a batch 2012 journalism. She was asked by the examiner, the question is, what activities do you like doing at night? So, 
if you are a normal student, you will be asked about that. You'll say, oh, I like watching movie, Netflix and chill. Diba? I like laying down on my, in my bed, on my bed, and then I'm pretending and dreaming without acting. There you go. You know what my student said? <clears throat> well, during my free time, especially on the full moons, I go onto our roof. What I do on that particular place is I look at the moon. There is this traditional Incan Mayan belief that if you look at the moon, especially on full moons at 1149, the rays of the moon can make your aspirations a reality. And by far, this eccentric actions of mine has been working in momentous ways. Wanna make a guess? What's Ms. Trisha Jane Lim's score in speaking? She scored nine in speaking. Right. Sir, nakailang istudyante ka na ba dyan sa ilit na naka nuebe? If you're going to see my office, guys, I have my Hall of Famers, as I would like to call them. I have this wall wherein I display the photos of my students who got a nine in speaking or writing. Minsan, picturean ko, send ko sa inyo, pakita ko. Maluluko kayo ang dami nila. No? Why? It's because I always tell them to swim against the tide. Ko anong pipiliin ng iba, wag ka doon. No? Be unique on the examination. So if they love eating chocolates, you love drinking soy sauce. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Another tip. Oh, your favorite guy. Something that you like to forget that much and that often. No? I know you know this one when you were in high school. What singular bird? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's my assistant who did my PowerPoint. <laughs> look at the look at <laughs> singular subject. Singular bird. What? I love birds, okay? I studied ornithology, the study of birds. Okay, so <laughs> basic rule, basic subject verb agreement, guys, okay? Singular subject, singular verb. Okay, my brother elucidates well on his acumen. So brother is singular, so the action has an S. Okay, the only thing that you have to do, remember when it comes to subject verb agreement is, listen carefully, if for example, that is a subject, if that is plural, you're going to add S, right? If that is the plural form of the verb, however, guys, you're going to eliminate, uh, you're going to eliminate the S. Okay? Magkabaliktad sila. Let's take a look. Plural subject, plural verb. The people rely on their leader on this situation. Okay. The people rely on their leader on this situation. So it does not say the people relies. The people relies. Is that correct? No, it's not. Okay? And there are a lot more when it comes to subject verb agreement. There are rules when it comes to subject verb agreement i think i made the compilation of uh, subject verb agreement uh sir jeff i will coordinate with you and i will send you the handout of the discussion of the subject verb agreement okay so that you can send them to the participants here today okay all right thank you sir you're always welcome guys i love what i do don't worry okay kung pwede nga lang di ba sa exam mo ako yung makita mong examiner ang saya noon Diba? Yung tipong <laughs> pagpasok mo, nakangisi ako sa'yo. Galingan mo, ha? Sasaksakin kita sa kanto mamaya. No. Okay. So next one, guys. Part two. Let's talk about your favorite part. God bless. God bless you too, my dear. Okay. <clears throat> part two is the individual long term. When you say individual long-term, guys, this is your favorite part. Why? People are dying on the second part. <laughs> Cause of death? Loss for words. Diba? Hindi umaabot ng two minutes ang speaking time. Okay, let me tell you one thing. There are two things that can happen on your examination. Let's pretend that I'm your examiner and then I stopped you within one minute. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Within one minute, I stopped you. I said, okay, that's enough. Thank you. Good thing, bad thing. Bad, good, 
good, bad, 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 good, 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 bad, bad, good, good. It is either bad or good. Let me explain. It's good if you have highly impressed your examiner. When you say you have highly impressed your examiner, I don't need to hear any more. I know what to give you. So I don't need to listen to the two minutes anymore. So stop moving on. Let's move on to your third part. Whereas it's bad if your examiner sees that you cannot talk anymore. Like you have paused for more than 10 seconds per se. You're not speaking for 10 seconds. Like you're quiet staring at your examiner like this. You're struggling. Right? Okay. So if your examiner interrupts you, you ask yourself, what did I do wrong or what did I do right? Okay? So make sure of that. All right. So <clears throat> also known as the longest two minutes of your lives, right? Have you noticed, guys, when you are writing on a time-pressured environment, like one hour for your writing task one and the writing task two, right? One hour is so quick. It's so fast. It's, it's a jiffy, right? Wow, it's a jiffy. However, this two minutes, it feels like it's forever. Why? It's because you're not telling a story. The number one technique that you should apply when it comes to your part two is to tell a story. <clears throat> this ensures that you reach the two full minutes that is expected of you on the speaking examination. Okay, here's the tip. All right, so techniques, outline, outline, outline. Do not be dependent on the cue card. Sometimes the examiners on the part two, they will get that question card from you. What if you did not write down anything on the piece of paper in front of you? What have you? What are you going to look at? Right? Okay. Let me show you a technique when it comes to outlining. All right. Hold on. Excuse me, guys. Let me open my whiteboard for you. Okay, whiteboard. Can you see my whiteboard? There you go. Okay. So, how do we outline on the IELTS part two? The first thing, okay, you are going to draw an X, okay? Or the cross method. Very good, Sean Mark. You're going to draw an X. Oh, the cross method. I remember the cross method. That was when I was still at GMA 7, lecturing for GMA 7 before I moved to ABS. I was that lecturer who taught them how to do the cross method. Now, I changed it to X method. Baka sabihin nila, gaya-gaya pa ako kahit ako umimbento nun, di ba? Okay, so, X method. All right. There you go. Okay, so, for X method, guys, on the top part, you're going to write down the general topic. So, let's say the question is, describe the impact of tourism. So, what's the general topic, guys? It is impact of tourism. So, you're going to write down here on the top part, Impact for impact of tourism. All right. And then you are going to number the quadrants of the X with numbers one, two, three, and four. Okay? So let's pretend. <clears throat> oh, wait. Where's the pencil? Number one, number two, number three, and number four. Don't forget the numbers. You might confuse yourself on the examination. And if you forget the numbers, then of course, you will confuse your examiner too on which part of the question card you are, right? Okay, so for quadrant one, this will be highly dedicated for question one. Sir? Do I need to copy the question? No, you do not. You do not need to copy the question. What you should write down here is the keyword of the question. So for example, the question, the, your first bullet is 
how does tourism benefit the country? So you're going to write down the word benefit, right? And then you write down the benefits that you can think of, okay? What are the benefits of tourism, okay? So number one, there is an increase in taxation, right? And then there is an increase in revenue, okay? That is a benefit of tourism. What else? Sorry, I'm using my mouse. I left my notepad, <laughs> my digital notepad at, at the office. I do apologize. Okay, so, so since there is an increase in tax, there is an increase in, increase in revenue. My yuyon, revenue. Revenue, there's also an increase in labor, right? There is an increase in labor available for the people. Let's pretend that the second question is, how does foreign tourism harm the country? Again, how does foreign tourism harm the country? So what's the keyword for this one? You're going to write down the inimical aspects, okay? So write down. I-type ko na nga lang. Why am I making it difficult for myself? <clears throat> okay. So the keyword here is inimical aspects, right? Okay. So let's pretend. What are the inimical aspects of foreign tourism? Number one. Extirpation of the environment, right? <coughs> this extirpates the environment. It destroys the environment that we have. Like, for example, um, Boracay. What happened to Boracay last year? Oh, Boracay. <laughs> Instead of saying Boracay, you say Boracay. So what about, what about Palawan? What about Palawan? Palawan. Okay. Now, what's another thing, guys? Another thing is, if there are a lot of foreigners, what do you observe? If there are a lot of foreigners here in the Philippines, what happens? There is... an increase in prostitution, right? There is an increase in prostitution. And also, there is an increase in crime. The crime rate skyrockets, no? Okay. And then, let's pretend that the third question is asking you, would you invite a foreigner to live in your country? If so, why? So, you're going to write down. Ilagay mo lang dito. What's the keyword? Invite foreigner? Invite alien? Okay, so this is setting the tone, no? I love to do this. I make, I make, I make it more humorous for me on my exam so that I don't get nervous. Invite alien, but don't say alien, ha? You say foreigner. Okay. Eh, so the foreigner na lang. Eh, nakalimutan ko yung spelling, sir, eh. Kaya alien na lang nilagay ko. Okay. So, would you invite a foreigner to live in your country? Yes or no? Again, I always tell you, swim against the tide. People will say, yes, I will invite a foreigner to live in the Philippines because the Philippines is a very hospitable country. It has a lot of hospitals. <laughs> However, no. Diba? You do not invite a foreigner to live here. Why? Number one, the country is corrupt as it is. Uh, the leaders are corrupt. Apart from we are famished, we are famished and in destituteness, right? Destituteness is another. It's too poor here in the Philippines. That's why I cannot blame you guys why you want to go to another country and live. No? Because your life there will be better. Pero kung gusto niyo sa Pilipinas lang, Elite Intellect 9 is open for franchising. Salamat! <laughs> okay, let's continue. All right, so what's the next technique? Can I minimize my, what do I call this? My whiteboard? All right, so hold on. Destitutes. Destitute. Okay. Huh? What happened? Uh oh. Guys, I think I, ac I accidentally closed my whiteboard. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. <laughs> okay. So, next one. Clear your head. 
and do not panic. Speak in a steady pace. When you say speak in a steady, steady pace, do not rush, okay? Do not speak like this on the examination. Well, let's talk business searcher. I PM. <laughs> like, okay, so for example, in your examination, you were asked about, <clears throat> what do you call this? That particular question. Do not say, foreign tourism it has a lot of positive impacts in the Philippines. One of the impacts is, of course, there's an increase in the jobs. There's also increase in the tax. There's also increase in the finances. The disadvantage of this one is there's also increase in prostitution, pollution, and, of course, a lot of people are actually suffering from uh, crime. And, of course, I wouldn't invite a foreigner for them to live in the country because it is famished and destitute. Do you think you will reach two minutes by speaking like that? Would you reach two minutes? Of course, you would not, right? So, here's the perfect pace. Foreign tourism may present a major, an array of merits and drawbacks for the people of a country. The meritorious aspects of foreign tourism is, are, it increases the taxation of a country, hence the revenue of the government can aid the finances directly. Another one is, it generates jobs for the people. The locals can procure jobs with, which will be readily available for them up for grabs. The inimical sides, however, of foreign tourism can also be noticeable. One of which is there is an increase in prostitution rate. Okay. Did you see that the way that I'm delivering that part two is I'm not rushing. I'm telling a story, right? Because that's for me to ensure that I'm going to reach my three minutes time. I know you have heard this before. Okay. Raise your hand or say, I do. If you have heard this technique somewhere before, the technique is if you ran out of things to say, say another thing. Like, for example, if you ran out of ideas with the book that you're saying, you say another book. Who heard of that technique before? Raise your hand. I do. Okay. Okay. All right. There you go. There you go. Yes, it's totally fine for you to do that, guys. However, it's not enough to get you a 7.5 in speaking. Once you do that, your score will be playing in between 6.5 and a 7. So very dangerous. Okay? As I always tell you, stick to one central theme on the examination. So if you, if for example, the, the question is the book per se, then you should stick on that one particular book, okay? The book that I love is my grandmother's witchcraft book. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I am from the witchcraft capital of the north, Cuyapo, Nueva Ecija. I'm kidding. There's no such thing as witches. But yes, my family is from Cuyapo, Nueva Ecija. That's where my uh, my mother is from. If you guys know the Padillas of Nueva Ecija, the Kuya Po, no? Sila Tito Roye, sila Tito Robin, yung mga yan, no? Ang mga magpadilya ng Nueva Ecija. Okay. So next one, guys. Speak, tell a story for every bullet. Okay, so for example, you were asked about your examiner, uh, a book. When was the first time you have read this book? So tell a story. Even though there's no particular story to tell. Well, when I was in college, I have a friend. His name is Jeff. What Jeff did is he recommended this book to me for me to be able to something and so on and so forth. Okay? All right. Kaya pa, guys? Or is it getting late? Kaya pa? Kaya pa? Nakakailang oras na ba tayo nagmi-meeting? See? Oh, my God. Time flies. Right? Time flies. It's already 11.20. Buti na lang yung Zoom ni Ate Roda pang mayaman. Kaya pa, para sa pangarap. Sabi ko sa inyo, hanggang 5.30 tayo rito eh. Okay. Ah, sige. Intermission number. Intermission number. Okay, Sir Jeffrey, may I see that? Who's that? Davis. Viola Davis? Viola Davis? Davis Viola? Paging Davis Viola. Davis Viola. Davis Viola. Hello. Hi, sir. I 
actually they're referring to me. Oh, hi. Hello. How are you? Hi, I'm, <laughs> I'm currently Jason, taking the one my yesterday, The one who's going to take the examination tomorrow? Is this him? The one that we were uh, with yesterday? Yes, no. sir. Oh, yes, this is me. Oh, hello, my dear. Okay. Sir, okay. Uh, can I not, can I just not show my camera because I'm kind of taking a shower. Oh, you're kind of taking a shower? So, kalahati lang ng katawan mo binabasa mo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, okay. What's the keyword? Pack the nerd. Okay, so let's continue, okay? Yeah, it's okay. You can, you, it's okay for you to not open your camera, okay? So, um, what did I call you again? Chris. Davis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, let's talk about let's talk about offices. What are the different types of offices in your country? I'm not really quite sure about that because I work in a medical institution, but I think considering the uh, instability of economy here in the Philippines, I must say BPO offices and the fast food offices, but I'd like to focus more on the BPO in which it has this skyrocketing nowadays, maybe because it uplifts our economy in a way that it really boosts uh, with regards to our resources. And also it strengthens our treaties with different countries. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's move on. All right. For my next question, where do you think is the best place for people to walk during their free time? Mm, definitely to a road uh, less traveled by. What I'm trying to say here is like in uphill because a lot of people nowadays rather want to do something on a flat landscape in which I find it very unhealthy. So if you do this uphill climb or walk rather, uh, you could definitely enhance the circulation, the blood circulation within your system, thus uh, promoting um, a perfect distribution of oxygen and nutri nutrients within your body. Very well said. Okay, so next question. Let's move on to your next question. Please talk about, oh, I asked one of your classmates this question yesterday, okay? Please talk about a body of water which is yet to be unearthed. Um, well, considering that I am an aquatic type of person, I'd like to tell you about the Amazon River because I haven't been there and I'm very fascinated just watching, uh, watching it I'm watching it on the news or on the internet. I wanted to learn about how this uh, living creature actually interact with each other, considering that they mix from the salt uh, creature and to the fresh um, water. So I've actually discombobulated how the uh, uh, regulate this kind of interaction together and. Also, I wanted to uh, become a marine biologist in the future. So I really wanted to understand what is the symbiotic relationship we had with this uh, living creature to human. Very well said. Good job. There you go. Okay, let's give him a round of applause. Wow. I take back everything that I said yesterday. You were just really nervous okay good job okay so that's what you should do on your examination tomorrow okay eat your examiner alive okay that's very good discombobulated what else um symbiotic probiotics these are <laughs> the words that i actually heard and that was quite commendable okay so again did you see how you perform when you are relaxed as compared to when you are nervous Okay. But am right. I not nope. uh, sounded like I'm shouting, sir? No, it's not. It's not. It's not actually. It's actually fine. It's actually fine if you talk like that, okay, on the examination, right? That is a very good performance, okay? 
Is it your examination tomorrow? Yes, sir. Okay. I guarantee you, in Jesus' name, you will get an A. Okay? Or better yet. Thank you. Name. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right. So, let's continue, guys. Discombobulated. I love that word. Discombobulated. Discombobulated mean, means time. Okay. So, let's continue. All right. So. Okay. <laughs> 